In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this semi-modern barn door, and this video is going to cover everything from building the barn door from scratch, from how to install the hardware, how to actually mount the door on the hardware, and at the end, I'll give you a big final reveal. So if that sounds good, stay tuned, but knock next time. So this is the bathroom opening where we're going to be installing this barn door. I started by measuring and I found that a 32 inch by 80 inch solid core door, which is basically just a big hunk of wood, would serve as the base for this barn door. So I cut a little bit of the height down because it was a little too tall for my application. Then I vacuumed up the dust. Next, I marked the midpoint of the door because that's going to establish where we start our chevron pattern. For the veneer on my barn door, I installed a product called Reno Board, which you can basically just cut using a utility knife. But I since found out that that product was discontinued. Continued. So you'll need to find another peel and stick option or just go with some real wood and use a miter saw to cut it. So to create the chevron pattern, I cut a 45 degree angle using a carpenter square and a utility knife to score it. Then I matched the cut end up with that midpoint line and let the other end hang a little bit long. We're going to cut that down later. Then I mirrored this arrangement on the other side. Then I repeated this process over and over again. My package came with a lighter style of board and then a darker style. So I did the lighter first and then I started installing the darker boards and I'm going to continue Continue with that light dark pattern because I think it's going to give the door a nice contrast. And at this point, I started to lose faith in the uh, adhesive that was attached to the board. So I added a bit of additional construction adhesive and hopefully this works out. And to complete the initial chevron pattern, I'm just going to continue going back and forth with the light dark panels, adding a little bit of extra construction adhesive as I go. And I wanted to leave a bit of overhang, but anywhere that it was excessive, I just trimmed it off. Now with the initial chevron pattern complete, I need to cut another 45 degree angle, which is going to be the boards that match up with the 45 associated with the chevron. Just like before, I made the cut with a utility knife and a carpenter square, but if you're using actual lumber like a 1x4, you'll have to use a miter saw and then you would just attach it to this solid core door using construction adhesive and brad nails. There are plenty of different ways to do this, this is just how I did it. And honestly, I hope this holds up. I'm a little bit nervous. So at this point, you get the idea for the front of the door here. Let me roll a time lapse to finish out the front. And I know you're probably wondering about the overhang. I promise I'm gonna show you how to take care of that in just a second. After finishing with the front of the door, I flipped it over and I completed the back side. except I didn't do the chevron pattern. I just didn't feel like it. I just did straight boards. Now for the overhang, I just took a utility knife and I ran it along the edge. It cut off pretty easily. And I highly recommend something like this if you're doing peel and stick. If you're using real lumber, you'll obviously have to use a table saw or a circular saw. Speaking of circular saws, I'm gonna use this piece of one by 12 PVC board and I'm gonna rip it down to the width of my barn door. This is going to be the casing that goes around the perimeter of the door. And it's going to hide the rough edges. To attach this perimeter board, I use construction adhesive and brad nails. Clamps make it easy to hold the board in place while you nail it. I attached the perimeter board to the first long side, then I moved on to the second long side, applied construction adhesive, and then nailed the board in place. As you can see here, I miter the edges at a 45 degree angle with a miter saw. That way, when I cut the short edge to a 45 degree angle on both sides, it's going to match up perfectly with the 45 degree angle we left on the long side. As you can see here, construction adhesive and brad nails to attach it, and it looks pretty good. Now, there's going to be a small gap between the perimeter boards we just installed and the reno board product that we applied previously. So to fix this, I masked off around a quarter of an inch inside of the perimeter boards, and that is going to help to keep the caulk that I fill that gap with from going all over the place. It's going to hopefully make it pretty neat and crisp. I used my finger as needed to spread the caulk around and then I took some black paint and painted the entire perimeter of the barn door. Then after letting it dry, I removed the tape, but I waited too long to remove the tape. You should remove it when it's still kind of wet. Now let's move inside and talk about hardware. I bought all the hardware individually on Amazon and this was the track I purchased, which comes in individual segments that you attach together and then they interlock with this washer here. I believe my track came with four individual segments, so I repeated this process four times. Next up, I did a bit of measuring to figure out how high I wanted to actually mount that track so that it would work with my door. And then once I established how high I wanted it to be, I took a six foot level and I marked it using a pencil. Next, I marked the locations where the lag screws are gonna go into the wall. And these locations are going to need to correspond with where your studs are placed. You want these lag screws to be going into a stud and not into drywall. I initially set the lag screw using a hex driver. And then after positioning everything in place, I tightened everything up using a socket wrench. And if you're new to the channel, this is where this bathroom started in my basement. And I always knew I was going to be putting in a barn door. So I put in some headers there so I wouldn't have to worry about finding the stud when I installed the track. If you want to see how I did the rest of the projects in this bathroom, check out my channel.
Fast forwarding to where we are now, I installed the remaining lag bolts using a socket wrench and made sure everything was tight and secure. Next, it's time to install the rolling brackets which are going to hang on the top of the door and ride along the track. I established where I wanted to space those both from the top of the door and the sides and then I made the marks using a pencil. Next, I grab my drill and I pre-drill holes through the door at the size recommended by the door manufacturer for the bolts we're going to be installing later. After drilling two of the bolt holes for each of the brackets, I positioned it in place, made sure everything was going to line up, and then I went on the underside of the door and I installed the actual threaded piece which is going to mate with that bolt that we're going to install from the top. Moving back to the top, I took the bolts, inserted them in place, and those are going to thread into the inserts that we just hammered in on the bottom. It was a pretty tight fit. After installing the brackets, it was time to install the actual barn door handle, and again, I purchased everything separately on Amazon because it was cheaper, but you can get everything in one package as well. I positioned the barn door handle in place, and I marked the locations where I'm going to need to pre-drill for the bolts that are going to go through the front of the door and into the bracket on the other side. After pre-drilling, I positioned the washers in place, took my handle, positioned it on top, and then I took the insert that's gonna go on the other side of the door, positioned it in place, and then tightened up the hardware. At this point, it's finally time to install the door, so I grabbed it. It's pretty heavy as a solid core door, as you might imagine, and I positioned the hanging brackets so they would ride along the track that we installed previously. After getting it up on the track, I gave it a bit of a test, being pretty tentative at first, just to make sure that it wasn't gonna fly off the track. Here's how it should look if everything lines up properly. And once the door was in place, we installed these door stops on the end, which is gonna prevent the door from sliding off the track. It also has a spring mechanism to prevent slamming. Finally, I purchased these door guides, which are gonna allow the door to move along the ground without getting off track. To install them, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna pre-drill into your studs through the baseboard in this case, and then secure it to the wall using two screws per guide. After installing the bracket, you're going to take this roller guide and you're going to position it so that it's just wide enough to allow the door to pass through. This is going to make sure that your door stays in alignment along its entire travel path. After getting it adjusted to the proper width, tighten everything down with a wrench. And here's a look at the door traveling within those guides. With the guides installed, this barn door project is complete. Let's take a quick reminder look at where we started. And here's a look at the final result. All right guys, that's a wrap on this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like down below. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe if you like DIY content like this. In the next couple of videos, we're gonna wrap up how I did this bathroom. If that sounds good, I'll see you then.